Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to the Hoosier Garage, to our now two project garage situation. Today I was going to do a video going back to the van, and that was concerning paint, primer, bodywork type of situation. But we seem to have a problem with the two barrel carburetor, which is rebuilt. It seems to be leaking some fuel, and uh, also a bit of a vacuum leak, it seems like. So uh, hopefully it's not like a burnt valve or anything. But so while I was gonna do a video about this, I think we're gonna do a video about this guy. So we've had a really awesome response since we've introduced or reintroduced the duster to the Hoosier Garage channel. It's been sitting out here in the parking lot, driveway, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, it's been rained on this week and I kinda walk by it each day after I get home from work. kind of depressing but I see a lot of potential a lot of hope and a lot of work you're watching the most unique automotive channel on YouTube the Hoosier garage so as we take a break from working on the mechanicals of the van I figure why not just get in here and cut out this floor pan and we can kind of do that. We do have subframe connectors. You can kind of see some of it there and you see more of it here. And they tie the front subframe, as some would call it, or the unibody front frame rails and cross member to the rear frame rails, which start somewhere around here and they go up and over. That's what eventually what uh, your leaf springs and all that stuff attach to. On Mopar, your rocker panels, or your rocker tubing, whatever you want to call this, this boxed-in area on each end, that's actually part of your frame, as well as you know the roof and all that stuff. That's that's the nature of a unibody. It is all unitized, unit, as in together. It's all a big family effort. So, one kind of good thing, if you want to look at it that way, is a lot of the floor pan has already disconnected itself from this frame rail so you would have had a couple of spot welds right here uh, maybe a couple here a couple on this other side of the, the lip of the frame it's still attached and right here we have our tetanus shot by the way so make sure you have yours too if you're gonna do this you would have had some welded here here you see a lot of it's just extra crispy so on this car in particular it's kind of easy to to figure out where the frame rails and everything falls since there's so much rot and holes and all that. So we're going to take our slimy lime green paint that I just have a little bit of and we're just going to telegraph some of this just for educational sake. So we know this is your torsion bar cross member goes across here you see some of it right here. It loops up where your hump would be so your transmission tail could fit through there and you can see the continuation of it on that side all right. So Oh, it don't even work. So we go from slimy lime to yucky yellow. And obviously, we'll just go by the width of it, roughly. So there's part of your cross member here. And there's where it goes there, and it pretty much cuts right there. It goes away from the body, the firewall, okay? Now this is the passenger side, there's your firewall. And it's like a mirror image. And there's obviously not very much over here either. And it goes all the way in to the rocker panel, okay? So, you know, like that. So your cross member is this whole yellow section here. Now, back here, there's some of this garbage out. The frame rail kind of lips and it ends right here. Because see right here, that's your frame rail and here's the, the subframe connector, which is basically just a piece of square tubing. And we might do something different with that later, but at the moment it's actually helping us. But right here, that's the end of this frame rail here, okay? And it's just as wide as the one up there in the front. And it pretty much eliminates from the 
floor pan in here, okay? There's a little bit of a piece of this section, which I just call it the back seat embracing, embracement, whatever, that goes and lifts underneath here, and this part sets on top of. So it basically eliminates there. And then you'll have the same thing on that side. So as far as how it connects to the floor pan, that's that. And like I said, your rocker panels down through here and down there, that's what holds this car together in this bottom end, as well as, you know, the roof on the top. So now that we understand that, a lot of guys like to go through certain procedures so that they are set up right. This having the subframe connectors kind of does it for you. Some cases they like to put a brace from here to here. Sometimes they'll lay it down on a jig. Uh, this is just sitting on the jack stands right now. And with my experience, that's pretty much been okay. Um, we have all the weight off the car, meaning engine transmission. So there's nothing pushing it down here and getting like a tweak going. So at the moment, since everything's pretty much tied in, we've got good frame, we've got good rocker panels with a little exception over there, I'm sure. I think we'll have to do a patch on the inside of the rocker panel. We can start slicing this thing out. And I'll show you what I do. I don't really get into uh, spot uh, spot well drill drilling or anything. I think it takes way too long. Um, I just like to cut it out with a cutting wheel, but don't cut out anything behind it like this part of the rocker or this panel here, this bracing panel that comes up. You don't want to just slice this off and go through that. You know what I'm saying? So. In some cases, uh, an air hammer is a good thing to have, um, particularly where you're just trying to split some areas together that don't really matter that much. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna eliminate all this little stuff, and then we'll get to the basics. One of the basics is this thing's gonna have to come out. It's rotting, so it'll get replaced or removed altogether. It's basically a chase for your wiring that goes down through here, and it keeps it from getting jabbed. So before we start, a couple of things. Uh, since the fuel lines and the brake lines have been removed, any uh, evap lines, anything like that, it's gone, okay? So I'm not worried about getting into that. Now if you're at a stage where you don't wanna take yours out, you can't take yours out, whatever the situation is, make sure you map them out, kinda like I did here, so that you don't go chopping through them, okay? And it'll cause you a bunch of hassle. Um, another thing, stuff like this, take some measurements, go from different directions, either you go from over here to here and here to, you know, the edge of this and write them down, post them up on the wall in the garage. Same thing with these holes here. I think the holes on the other floor pan is already mapped out. You just need to get the bracing if they didn't give it to you. AMD will sometimes give you the bracing, the little piece. It goes in there to beef that up a little bit. Sometimes they don't. If you don't, just cut this one out and dress it up and use it, okay? So we're gonna check, make sure the holes are there and that. If the holes are here, this goes into the rocker panel, so it should be easy to find, even if you cut all this out beforehand. Other than that, if you wanna map these out, they're kinda already here. This is where your wire goes for your seat belts and that sort of thing. So you got, uh, looks like three of them over there and three of them here and the dip always has one so that's where it goes under the bench seat tracks and any other provisions you got uh console brackets stuff like that and anything underneath sometimes you have your e-brake or your speedometer cable goes underneath here there'll be a, a little hook that it goes into if you got that map it out this is long gone if it did have one and so we're just gonna get started, get our cutting wheel out and our four and a half inch grinder, and we'll start getting the bulk of this out. And before I get too far ahead of myself, you have these brackets that come down off the rockers, okay? They're bracing for your seats, and that be it. Bench seat, bucket seat, you need the braces. They go right in under here. You got another one. Go a little wide. Know how wide they are. 
So if you get anywhere near that with your cutting wheel, just go up to it and then you go through. Instead of sinking that wheel all the way down in here, you just come up on the very, very top, just enough to cut this surface through. And you don't hack up a bunch of stuff that you gotta re-weld later. Okay. So you got these two here, you got the two on that side. Pretty much sums it up. Now is a great time to like and subscribe to the Hoosier Garage. Okay, so we got that out of the way, and I'll show you a good way to see what you're dealing with. See all this sealant? It's all kind of looks almost like a really nice weld going down the side. Usually, by the time they're this old, heck, even when they're 30 years old, you just take a scraper and you just dig that stuff out real good. And it's not difficult at all. It is very soft. And then you can see your seam right here. See that? That's your seam where this lap of the floor pan fits on top of the rocker. Now when you get to the side where the rocker panel starts to get involved here, like I said, this floor is setting up on a lip. Okay, so I don't want to take this as close as I can, although it is hard anyways because you would have hit this wall over here. But if you uh, stay away from that, best thing to do is trim down the side here very carefully and then you can take an air hammer and just peel this off relatively easy it just kind of rolls up so if you keep the flat as flat as you can you can usually do that uh, you're always going to have a little bit of a fight with it so don't get too discouraged if that's what's happening but I'm going to go shallow right down through here okay probably back to this corner I'm not going to sink it down in there But like I said, you want to just take a little bit of the wheel here and not go all the way. You want it to go where you see that much of the wheel, about that much right there. So you go sinking out through in there, it's going to cause you a lot more work. It's going to compromise the structural problems uh, down the road or while you're working on it. And you can see right now, I can kind of lift what is now just a, a straight piece of metal down through here. I can lift it up a little bit. and. Uh, Obviously, it is spot welded, so that's what you're disconnecting all of this from, okay? So I will continue to get this sliced up here. All right, so we've cut a perimeter around here through this rusty, non-existent stuff around this bracket here, down the edge, across here, and up along the hump. You can see it's pretty weak. This bracing here has, still has a couple spot welds to hold it. I'll probably just go ahead and slice around it. Yeah. I might even just go up right to it because there's actually rust through right here. And you have some spot welds around the seat belt brace right here. So uh, I might just come down here and cut it and then just leave that an isolated piece I can trim out later, okay? Like I said, I like to just trim it out in sections and remove it. And then it just gives you a little bit more insight of what you're dealing with. If you have the ability or have the desire to cut it all out in one big piece, more power to you. And you can see the brace is coming through when I push down on that. There's the edge of your floor, bucket seat, bench seat, brace. Probably got more hanging on to it like this over here. different from back there where that laps it just sits on top of the other piece this one here you have to imagine it comes up and it goes down so it does this part here that you see is this like my back of my hand and wrist and my fingers going down is the, the flange firewall does the same way it comes down and they both flange and they're actually spot welded inside of here okay so best thing to do in my opinion is just to cut right up next to it again don't sink it all the way through in most spots uh, again, from about here 
to the middle and over about the same place on that side you can sink it through there's nothing there but here on this side you're going to have this bracing here that you want to contend with and you want to be careful not chop it up always remember that just i'm going to keep stressing that at least early on because you don't want to go cut through stuff that you don't want to cut through Okay, so one thing I want to remember, and I'll remind you, where this pan back here goes underneath here, it kind of boxes this in. So theoretically, it, it drops down underneath this, comes out, and stops about here. So like I say, you want to avoid cutting all the brackets into them, so you want to go just surface deep. Same thing there. I've got piece under there I sliced into it a little bit so you still make the mistake I got a little carried away just cutting around this perimeter here I put it looks like about three little inch wide cuts in it no big deal but it's just something that you have to uh, go back and repair later or just fill in with weld so no big deal but I got to go ahead and continue my surface cut through here and I should be able to lift uh, from here down into here yep. yeah that's all that's holding it there so when I cut the the hump this all drop so let me slice this out and there might be a couple spot welds there obviously this is where the tip of the frame rail comes out it might be holding on to it through here but we can always just cut around here just to get it out and then trim the rest of it out later Okay, so again, in theory, this leaves us like a band that we could just cut up in sections, remove it gradually. Yeah, it's a little tedious to doing it this way. Um, that's why I've always done it. And, you know, you kind of get to know things pretty good structurally as you go. And uh, so we got a band here. We can snip loose, do it different ways. Obviously, this one down here. And do the same thing over here. And now it's time for In the Pits with Billy. Hello everybody, it's Billy from Who's Your Garage, also the Keeping the Nostalgia Alive show on YouTube. Please subscribe to both of our channels. Last time I left you with kerosene in the gas tank. Well, it was actually kerosene in the engine block. My first car as a kid was a 1966 Bonneville Pontiac. It was a 389 four barrel. They called it the lead sled. Well, the timing chain broke. I took it to get it fixed in Terre Haute, Indiana, but they didn't get all the plastic pieces from the previous timing chain out of the engine block, so it clogged where the oil runs. So I threw a rod. So we did everything we could after towing the car from Terre Haute back to Indianapolis and we finally got it fixed, but then it started acting up again. So we poured kerosene in the engine block and one person was on one side, one was the other, and we were shaking the car vigorously uh, so that we can clean and see if we can get those plastic pieces out of the engine block. Unfortunately, we didn't. So that's my story about kerosene in the gas tank. 
So please join us at the Hoosier Garage on YouTube and also the Keeping the Nostalgia Live show on YouTube for upcoming car shenanigans with Billy. Alright, welcome back. It's the next day since I started this project really late yesterday because it's a van issue. So we're a little earlier on this one, so that's cool. Um, a lot of this is the remaining areas that need to be taken out, the banding as I'm calling it. You leave like a little band, it's not got a lot of form to it, which will fight you. The band here is just a one dimensional piece at this point, like along here, it's just a strip about an inch and a quarter wide. And uh, a lot of that's spot welded, that's where it's welded to the rest of the car. So we have an air hammer here, I bought this at Central Pneumatic, I bought it at Harbor Freight maybe seven or eight years ago. It was like seven or eight dollars at the time. It might be a little more now. I don't know. Sometimes they have deals and you can get them even cheaper. Uh, you can find better ones too, bigger, smaller, whatever. And excellent little tool for stuff like this. But there's some rules that I like to, to use uh, when using it. Uh, you're, this is basically looks like a chisel. It's an air chisel hammer situation. So if I stick it in here and apply the air and the trigger to it, it's going to separate these two pieces. All right. Typically when you're using this on something like this, you want to save one half of it. You don't want to just tear up both sides. So uh, it's going to be easier on some areas than others. For instance, this area right here, you want to save obviously this whole rocker panel, this boxed in area. You just want to get this old piece off. So when I apply air to it, wear glasses, good to wear gloves for the vibration. You'll stick it in here. And since the rocker panel area is much stronger, it's got the box that's on a, a, a corner here, it's gonna be stronger and it's gonna withhold. The weakest part's gonna be this actual band that we've left. So if I stick this in here, see that? It goes right in there. Sometimes you can use it to pry away a little bit. And your first spot welds right here. You wanna be careful with spot welds. You wanna go in a little bit here, and a little bit here otherwise it's going to tear a hole out and want to rip it and peel it away from the area that you want to keep okay that's typically what's going to happen if i come in here and you can break it away too if you have to like this one should be pretty good see that so we went over the top of the spot wood and it just leaves a little remnant underneath there that you can take your grinding wheel when you get all this off and you clear it out so if you've not used one of these before they're very simple but you just got to take some things into account now areas like this are going to be different this panel like i said earlier is part of this you want to keep that and it ends almost as as where this one ends okay this piece that you want to remove so since they're both fairly equal type pieces I don't necessarily want to just go hog wild and tear this out because it's gonna it's gonna tear up or make a warpage of the panel here that we want to keep. It is about the same thickness, so yeah, you'll have to probably do some cuts in here and tear it out in pieces. And again, that's if you're not using a spot weld drill or anything of that matter. Um, and up here, it might not be too bad. I could take a little jab at it here. And just see what it does so you can get a you can definitely peel it up a lot quicker you see what i'm saying you can just jam it in there where i can't do it here yet see that So I've kind of been working my way around this perimeter back here. I got to take this piece down here out, but the hump here wasn't too difficult. There was actually about three spot welds here and there was one here. And if you peel back some of the sealant, you'll see a little oval slot and they weld it there. The new reproduction four pan, four pan does not have that slot. So if you want to put it back, 
a good idea that way you can weld it here but you can see it still got dirt up under here so it wasn't flush to it and it was uh, spot welded a couple places here and here so that's why I cut it here cut it same place on this side and the whole thing folded over after I got these and it just pulled right out I got the back seat retainer removed I measured off for it and transferred scribe marks to the new floor pan so the perimeter of it is is dialed in on that so that went ahead and came off and I saved it we'll have to uh, dress it out have it ready and uh, so I need to pull this piece out. This will be difficult. Like I went over earlier, you you got two similar pieces of metal that are flatly uh, spot welded together. So I'll have to, I'll probably just trim slots down through here and take it out in pieces. Okay, so there's one area here I'm going to show you. And it's one of the few surrounding areas or mating surface areas to this floor pan we're gonna put in that has any issues. And that is this lower part of the firewall. You can see how rusty it is. I think a lot of this happens over the years from, you know, just this is where your feet are gonna be. And, uh, but you wonder why is it rusting? Cause your feet are on pedals and all this stuff. I think some of this is due to your brake master cylinder mounts here and you see it gets into that dark rust here and kind of around the steering column hole and it just I think a lot of it at times it'll you'll have one that leaks and it gets back in here of course it takes the paint off and that's what it looks like the paint is just all and it's the white paint they put on the car so over time it strips the paint and then you have stuff like rust holes and it's ate through here and then it's ate through here so it looks like it's all right over here because there's still paint. So I'm probably just gonna make this part of removal easy and save myself some trouble and just cut up about an inch and come across here and then slice it off. Uh, will that be the patch panel that will need to be built here? Not necessarily. That'll just clear us and remind us that that needs to be addressed. Uh, there's a couple spot welds on this cross brace here and one on this front kick up of the rocker panel. And that's pretty much it once we cut that. So, um, and yeah, I guess there's one here. We'll have to chip that out. I did that over on that side. A Little bit of work there, but went all right. Went pretty clean. Pan, I pulled the floor pan out by the way. Here it is. And you can see this is the part that'll sit on top of the frame rails or the uh, rocker panels, I should say. And then here's your flange down here that we're just now working on. Right here, it goes all the way around. That's the driver's side. And uh, here's that where these guys, we we'll have to trim them up and get this bottom piece, the floor off of it. And then they will mount in there. And here's your corner. And there's your seat belt holes. Yeah, these have the holes, but they don't have the bracing in there, which we need to get this bracing off this is the same spot right there as those okay so we'll get that cut out and then we'll do a test fit just for fun of that panel in here and seeing as the windows are out here it will go right in clean all this up out from under here, get all this stuff cleared out. Several hours, I would, I don't know, let's see about eight hours, I would guess. That's my way of doing that. And if you could do it a better way, like with spot, uh, spot weld drill, you go for it. I've just never had much luck with them. So that's a pretty intensive job. That might be one of the most intensive jobs 
It seems like anywhere that you do rust repair, like cutting out, um, in particular the removal and cutting out of corners, intersections of other, like the back corner, uh, and of course you're just full of them here, this corner up here, this ain't so bad, but you have it right up against the rocker, and then all of the frame rails that you're splitting it from, so that makes it really difficult. And uh, of course, a pan or a, pa a panel that large, I mean, if you get all this stuff cleaned up and you get it in, yeah, we got a lot more work to do. I mean, it's like a lot of work. But that's cool. That's like I said, if you watched the first couple videos, this is the reason I bought this car. Um, it's, it's the worst car I've ever had. Um, it probably is worse than the van. And if you go back and look at the van, it was pretty rough. But uh, we have some like rust going on right here. Um, fortunately, I have this section of pillar and that side up about here, it's really bad. So I might have to graft in a whole new section either the inside or, or the whole thing together. And we'll have to do really good weld on that, okay? So, um, yeah, I'm gonna clear this up. We'll stick that pan in here. So here's our test fit. And if you're wondering how these go in, you do have to have the window, quarter window out. And you can take it, see how it is here? You can actually go in this way, and then you kind of get it up, up here, and you kind of slip it down and it drops in. It doesn't go in this way. It's too long. It'll be down here, and it'll actually be sticking out here too far. So you have to go in kind of head first, turn it sideways. It does need to go forward just a touch. You can tell by that bolt hole there. But what is holding it is some of the roughness of the firewall flange there. It's sticking down and pushing it down. But it does fit up on here pretty good. And it's just setting here, it's really solid. And it's a really good fit. The only has to now is just taking it back out so it don't get weather on it. But uh I'm happy with it so far. It looks like we'll have a good fit and you'll get all this flushed up here, this with this, cause it's setting out right now and get you some vice grips or welding pliers or not pliers, but uh, clamps and clamp them there, clamp them through here. And you can even screw it down in a few places so you get everything where it needs to be like that sort of thing. Once you get it set forward, but we'll worry about that on another day. But yeah, that's uh, what it takes to get one of these set. However you need to do it, that's my way of doing it. And uh, this is the satisfying part, just seeing it sitting in there and knowing, of course you have to do all your spot weld hole, drill the holes, and then you can weld it to the front subframe along here, and then along this back bulkhead, and into the firewall. And that will complete that job, but we got a lot of work to do to the substructure underneath there. Thank you for watching the Hoosier Garage. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more restoration, tips, and fun.